Hi, I'm Ray Balzer with AIM Pro Billiards. Warning, this is a very advanced and specialized topic for the rare few. Estimating pull shot angles is an advanced topic itself. I have a video series on it called AIM Right, What's That Cut Angle? There, I recommend you develop your intuition for judging angles. In the new, just released, Angles Challenge 101 pool game is an excellent tool to help you develop this judgment. But lacking that judgment on some shots, one can fall back on other techniques. I describe various techniques in parts 2 and 3 of that series. Part 3 describes the table geometry technique, which is very demanding, among other skills. It requires memorizing many numbers, being able to do parallel shifts, and be quick with addition and subtraction. That video was just an introduction to the topic. There's much more required to fully describe how to implement it in all situations. But there's not been enough demand, and I've been busy developing the Angles Challenge 101 game. That game now provides an easy way for me to give some more help for those few who have been working out the technique for themselves. So, if you are one of those rare few, continue on. Otherwise, if you're interested, you should first watch all the prior videos in that series, and then try it out on the pool table for a while then come back to this video. I'm going to play three perfect racks using the Angles Challenge 101 game. This will be from levels 10 through 12 of the game. Off camera, the game gave me the exact data which I used both to select the cut angle and then post-process the details into this final video. This will be the idea. With each shot, I will simulate using my intuition to select the cut angle. Then, I will confirm that cut angle with table geometry, first determining the object ball angle and then the cue ball angle. Then those will be combined to confirm the selected cut angle. I am not showing the intermediate steps of analyzing the table diamonds, nor showing or doing parallel shifting, etc. Nor am I showing the process when your angle estimate is off and how to use table geometry to correct your estimate. That's all for another time. But I think this will be very useful in the meantime and it's quick and easy for me to do. So let's get going. I will give a few seconds at each step for you to try to estimate the object ball angle and then the cue ball angle before showing it. Likely you will want more time. Just pause the video until you come up with your estimate, then continue. What's the object ball's angle with respect to the short and long rails? First figure one, then the other is 90 minus that. Now the same for the cue ball's angle. Whoa, that's a lot of angles, a lot of numbers. But relax, you don't have to work with all of these when using table geometry. I'm giving you all the numbers here, but you can simplify. I'll tell you how as we move along. Note that you can compute the cut angle with either short or long rail as the reference, but don't extrapolate this too far. With back cuts it'll be different. That's coming in a bit. 
For me, it's much easier to use the smaller numbers. First, I find them easier to subtract in my head. Secondly, the smaller numbers immediately put an upper bound on what the cut angle could be. So, how do we target using the smaller numbers? The key is to recognize and then avoid the largest number of the four, 61.1 degrees in this case. Identify the reference rail right at the start. Do that by identifying the worst case large angle number. In this case, it would be the object ball, the two ball, with the short rail as reference. So, my shorthand is to pick the rail closest to the worst case. So the two ball is closer angle-wise to the long rail, so that's what we'll use for the computation. I'm still showing both numbers, but you should only be targeting one number, 10.8 degrees in this case. Here, only target one number. Well, for sure, it's 45 degrees, but here we would focus on the long rail value. Now, we just do the long rail computation, 45 minus 10.8. Now, in this case, it's the cue ball that defines the extreme. Its value would be very high with respect to the short rail. It's closest angle-wise to the long rail, so that's what you should select for computation. Obviously, both balls are closest, both physically and angle-wise, to the long rail. That's what will give the smaller number set. It's the cue ball that is the worst case, and it's closest to the short rail. There's no obvious best choice here. Choose either one. You're on your own now for the next few shots.
when a ball is right next to a rail. That makes for easy analysis to pick that rail as reference. This looks a little tricky, since everything is on an angle. Look for which is closest to the line of one of the rails. In this case, it's the cue ball that's closest to the long rail line. Now, with using side pockets, if you're using memorized data based on the table diamonds, be careful to use rail diamond references specific to the side pocket. If you use the angles associated with the diamonds from the corner pockets, you'll be wrong. If you can determine the cue ball angle by just using the exact line of the cue ball path, the value can be exact. But if you choose to do a parallel shift, there are issues. In real life, you have to be steady physically so that the cue stick doesn't change lines. But if you don't move, and project a line, a parallel line mentally, you will be subject to visual errors. And in the game view, which has a 3D perspective, you will also have visual errors. Consider that in 3D views, parallel lines do not appear parallel, but rather appear to converge. Here, I'm trying to do a parallel shift to estimate the cue ball angle by using an object ball angle derived from the corner pocket. The dashed white line is exactly parallel in the image, but that's not right because of perspective. The solid black line, amazingly, is closer to an actual parallel line in real life. It's a big difference. Again, that's caused by the 3D perspective. Keep this in mind when estimating cue ball lines in the future. There's no obvious better rail reference. Use either one. The cue ball controls this one. This is our first back cut. Trust me, use the short rail in this case. I'll explain more in a moment. Here's a surprise. 
There's only one way to compute the cut angle. We must use the short rail as reference in this case. The general rule to follow is to use the rail we are rotating away from with the cue ball. In this case, we are rotating and shooting away from the short rail. Here's another back cut. Remember the rule. In this back cut, we are shooting away from the long rail on the left side.
the object ball is the worst case. a back cut and the cue ball is going away from the nearby short rail. This would be an amazing crazy shot to make in real life. Let's figure back cuts a little more precisely. Here's an example. The dashed line is parallel to the short rail and goes through the contact point. See how it separates the directions of the two balls? That's essentially the definition of a back cut and the short rail is the one in this case. Well, here's an interesting case. We're going away from both rails. How do we choose which one? I do it this way. Consider that it's a back cut because we are turning away from the long rail on the right. Another back cut. We need to apply our new insight that we pay attention to which rail we are turning away from. The right side long rail. Let's talk about how to efficiently do this computation. 
With ordinary cuts, you want to estimate the larger number first, then get the smaller number next and subtract it. How to do this? When first standing behind the shot, you need to immediately decide which rail is your reference. Which ball, object ball or cue ball, controlled that? That ball will now have the smallest value, so estimate it last. So if the cue ball controls the selection, do the cue ball last, like we've been doing. But if the object ball controls, for example by being close to a rail, then do the cue ball first and do it right away while standing behind the shot. Then move to look behind the object ball, get its angle, and subtract it from the cue ball's angle. It can be a little bit awkward to do this object ball control method with the Angles Challenge 101 game because the game was optimized for fast action and for learning angles estimation by inspection, not for table geometry calculation. So when you use the game and do table geometry and the object ball is controlling, to do the cue ball first, either estimate it immediately if you can before going to the object ball view, or click twice quickly going through the object ball view to the cue ball view. Then estimate and click again to go back to the object ball view. I hope this helps. Remember that while the Angles Challenge 101 game is not designed to teach or specifically implement table geometry, it does know all the ball positions and angles, so it was easy for me to adapt the game to tell me the exact angles for each shot. That's what I've done. I've captured a low-resolution version of the game while off-screen the gave, game gave me the object ball and cue ball angles. I post-processed that data into this video. Do not be confused into thinking that the Angles Challenge 101 game displays table geometry data. It does not. Nonetheless, I recommend the Angles Challenge 101 game as a great tool to help you develop your intuition for cut angles and learn the aim for the various angles. In addition, the views of the table and the table diamonds will give you an ability to practice your table geometry technique. Then, use your aim right to solidify your skills on the table. Thanks for watching.